Today's notes, we're going to be given the measure of two sides of a right triangle. We're going to find the measure of the angle, okay? Step number one is the same as last class. You're going to identify the placement of your sides. Do you have the side opposite it adjacent in the hypotenuse according to the angle? Use the appropriate trig ratio and then substitute in the equation, okay? You're going to evaluate x, which we need to change that side to angle. We're now looking for the angle. So the buttons that you're going to use is here, but I want you to circle, and it's kind of hard to read it from this uh, piece of paper. You're using the inverse sine button, the inverse cosine button, and the inverse tangent. So you're telling the calculator, I know the ratio for the angle. You tell me what that angle measure is, okay? For the first one, let's just identify what the triangle would look like if the sine of the angle was two-thirds. So again, you can only use sine, cosine, and tangent for a right triangle. So I know I have a right triangle. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this would be two over three. Now, because the calculator will tell you the angle, you have to somehow communicate on the state assessment what you're typing in. Okay, and we write it like this. So I expect to see this work on any, um, so that would be your test, because this is not in the quiz. So the sine of an angle equals two-thirds. I want you to tell me that the angle is equal to the inverse sine of two-thirds. This is what you're typing on the calculator. So the inverse sine of two-thirds is 41.8103149 rounded to the nearest degree that is approximately 42 degrees so you can type in your calculator the sine of 42 it's not going to be exact okay but it should be close to the decimal of two-thirds so you can check to see if you're right now in the middle one we're not going to bother drawing the triangle but to find Again, theta represents the angle in the triangle. So to find out what theta is, I'm just going to tell them on my calculator, I'm using my tool, given the ratio of my two sides adjacent over hypotenuse to be 8 over 21, the angle that goes with that, and you can use your trig table if you're more comfortable using the trig table, the second cosine of 8 over 21 is approximately... 68 degrees. So I should change that equivalence to the approximation symbol. 67 degrees. Last one, tangent of theta is 17 over 16. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent. I know the ratio. The calculator is going to tell me the angle. So inverse tan of 17 over 16 is approximately 47 degrees. And number two, we're going to find the area of the regular polygon. So the polygon has how many sides? Seven. A seven-sided polygon, so the polygon is actually a regular heptagon. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. Now, the angle, or our central angle, we had been previously looking at the area of a regular hexagon because the central angle was 60. And when you actually draw and make the triangles, this triangle is isosceles. So you divide the 60 degree angle in half, you had 230. So when we were doing the hexagon, that represented a 30, 60, 90 relationship. You need to find, well, what is this central angle going to be? So 360 degrees divided by 7, and what do you get? It's not an integer, right? It's irrational. So we're going to leave it in terms of a fraction, okay? Which is fine. We can do work with fractions. So I'm actually going to... We know that if this is an isosceles triangle, the apothem is the altitude. It also bisects each side. So with the area formula being one-half perimeter times the apothem, we already have the half, we're missing the p, and we have the apothem of 5. So I just need to find one of these so I can double it 
and then multiply it by 7 for the perimeter. So I'm going to draw this right triangle down below. So here's the right angle. Um, this was 5 feet for the apothem. I'm trying to find this part of the side of the heptagon so that I can double it to find the whole side. But this angle here is going to be half of 360 uh, over 7. So what is half of 360 over 7? Maddie? 180 over... No, nope. because if you had 180 over 3.5 and you added that twice, do you get 360 over 7? 180 over 7. So the angle measure, let's leave it in exact form. This angle is 180 over 7. So according to that angle, we have the side opposite and the side adjacent. So we're going to do tangent to find x. Tangent of 180 over 7 degrees equals x over 5. Are there any questions before we find the answer? So this is a, a nice equation because 5 is in the denominator, so it's just a quick product of 5 over here. And x equals, so the tangent of 180 over 7 times 5. So it's 2.407873094. Again, we're going to double it to find the whole side. So times 2. 4.8157461888. Now to find the perimeter, that's equal to one side. We have seven sides going all the way around, so I'm going to take this times seven, and that would give me the perimeter. It's good to keep the decimal in the calculator as you go. So times seven. My perimeter, I'm just going to write it up here. So it's one half of 33.7102233 times 5. So to finish this question, we just type this whole expression in. Or if you already have this, just do times a half times 5. And the area is going to be approximately so times 0.5 times 5 to the nearest tenth. 84.3 square feet. In number three, we have to find angle X and angle Y. So again, you can only find an angle if you're given a right triangle that has two of the sides given as well. So within this picture, you have only two right triangles. So if you take your highlighter, you have this larger right triangle in green and you have this pink right triangle. Those are the only two right triangles in that picture. So if you want, you can draw them separately. And the green one, here's the 90, you've got 40, 22, and here's Y. And the pink one, here's 22, here's X. That's the only thing that's given. So out of the two triangles, which one can we do or use trig to find the angle? To find x or to find y? Manny? To find y. So I'm going to use trig here first. So first we're going to do, given the angle, we have the side opposite. We have the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the trig ratio sine. So sine of y equals 22 over 40. So whenever you're trying to find the angle, we do the inverse, so we use the calculator and say the ratio is 22 over 40, tell me what the angle measure is. So inverse sine of 22 over 40 is 33, we're going to round to the nearest tenth, so y is approximately 33.4.
Now, going back to the pink triangle, I really need this side or this side. I can't find x until I know one of those two sides. Maria, what do I do? Yep. Let's call that E. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem in this right triangle to find E and then divide it in half because it shows in the picture that this is equal to that or congruent and therefore I have that uh, piece. So Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared but for today's assessment if you want to avoid taking the plus and minus we say that the leg is equal to the hypotenuse minus the other leg. So the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. So 40 squared minus 22 squared is 1,116. So let's leave it exact so that we don't have to round. Looking for the largest perfect square factor of 1,116. So I should see you guessing and checking on your calculators. 116 divided by, what's the largest? Largest perfect square factor. Did I hear it? Someone's quiet. Kylie? 36. It's 36 times 31. So 36 times 31 and then the square root of 36, 6 radical 31. So what's this side going to be? That was half of 6 radical 31, which is 3 radical 31. So now I can do, according to this angle, here was the 90. We have opposite over adjacent again. So the tangent of x equals, it's always the tangent, sine or cosine of the angle, opposite over adjacent. Now I can do, to find the angle, I do the inverse tangent of 3 radical 31 over 22. And x will be approximately 3 radical 31 divided by 22. Does that look better? Okay. So approximately x is equal to, to the nearest tenth, 37.2 degrees. Last one. It says the accompanying diagram shows a flagpole that stands on level ground. Two cables, R and S, are attached to the pole 16 feet above the ground. The combined length of the two cables is 50 feet. So here's the S, here's the R. That means R plus S equals 50. If cable R is attached to the ground 12 feet from the base of the pole, what is the measure of angle X to the nearest degree? Now, in order to find X, which is a part of this right triangle, I need to know S. So once I find R, I can find S. In this triangle right here, with sides 12, 16, R, this is a multiple of one of our triples. So if we know the triple, we can then double it or triple it. Can you divide 12 and 16 both by the same number? What's the common factor for 12 and 16? 4. So divide this by 4, you get 3. Divide this by 4, you get 4. So this would be the 3, 4, 5, but you got to multiply by 4 to go backwards, and R is 20. It's also, too, if you take the 12, 16, R, this is also a multiple of the 6, 8, 10. So you just double it. So if R is 20, what's S? 30. Now looking at this right triangle, we have the side opposite and the hypotenuse. So what trig ratio would we use? 
sine. So the sine of x equals 16 over 30. So x equals inverse sine of 16 over 30. And we're going to round to the nearest degree. So x is approximately... We all get the same answer? So the answer is going to be to the nearest degree, 32. But the answer, um, the cable makes, you could say approximately, I sometimes, I most of the time write about just because it's shorter, makes about uh, a 22 degree angle with the ground. I mean, 32, thank you, as that's my answer. The cable makes about a 32-degree angle with the ground.